Amen. I tell you what, when you call upon that name, all things are possible. All things, no matter how bad you think it is today, all things are possible with the name above all. Just that call upon the name of Jesus. I tell you what, I love the Lord with all my heart this morning. I know you do, or I know you wouldn't be here today. Amen. I can't help but that one part in there, it said, call him in the morning, call him in the afternoon time, call him in the evening time. I had somebody ask me one time, he says, what does that mean? Is we only supposed to call on Jesus three times a day? I said, no, duh, that means 24 hours a day. That means in the morning, in the noontime, in the evening time, in the nighttime, no matter what you're going through, all we got to do is say, Jesus... Here I am. I have a problem. You know what he's saying? I know you do, my child, and I'm glad you come to me. Because when you come to me, all things are possible. We can't do things like that on our own, my friends. we got to call upon the name of Jesus. Are you blessed this morning? Are you happy this morning? God's good. Has God did good things for you this past week? Amen, amen. Take your Bibles. Go to the book of James. I want to talk about hearing and doing the word this morning. Mm. I tell you what, you're here this morning to hear the word, correct? At least I hope that's why you're here. And I want you to hear the word this morning, and then I want you to do something about it. Oh, my goodness, words, you're right. God, you're good. He's a confirming God, isn't he? Everything is confirmation, and I love that because if the confirmation stopped, I would think we're out of rhythm with God. And we got to stay in focus and in line with God. Do you believe that this morning? We must stay in focus with Him. I love to hear the Word. I love to read the Word. I love to share the Word with you. But let me tell you something this morning, saints. If I didn't live the Word, I couldn't share the Word with you. If I didn't live the word, I wouldn't enjoy the word. If I didn't live the word, why would I even read the word? Amen? I think sometimes in our slackness of faith, sometimes in our slackness of our Christianity, I think sometimes we read the word and don't even no more know what that said than a man in the moon. You know why? Because we don't have our mind on it. We don't have our heart where it needs to be. We're not praising God like we need to anymore. Do you believe that today? I tell you what, there's nothing like praising and shouting to the Lord, hearing and doing the word. How can you not shout and praise our God that does so many things for us? That's like that last song that was sung. If that didn't ignite you this morning, I'm going to find me a campfire. I bet I'll light you up because I'm telling you what, you must be dead is all I can say. I've heard of walking in the dead, but boy, I've seen some of you standing in the dead this morning. Amen. But when we call upon the name of Jesus, all things are possible. All things can happen. All them mountains will fall. All them seas can roar to the name of Jesus. God's good, isn't he? Still looking for the money to buy these mirrors. <laughs> Going to take up a love offering some Sunday for mirrors in this place. I want everybody to see their face going. You know what you do, Pastor? You bring a mirror with you when they're doing that. Bring a mirror with me. Huh? Amen. I do thank God for all of you being here today. I know you're here to hear the word of God. I know that all of you is excited what God has for you. I know these children that are going to start school this week, oh, they want them prayers. They know. I don't care how small they are. They know what they're fixing to get into. And they know that everybody in school is not going to be from in his steps. They know that everybody in school is not going to be nice. And they know that everybody in school is not a Christian. But guys, if we read and we do the word like God tells us to do, guess what? All things are possible. I feel like this is going to be a good service. I feel like God has something to do today. I can just feel something in the air. 
I can just feel that God wants to work on some lives today. I can just feel that God wants to put that burning desire in your spirit this morning. Oh, some of you's looking at me like I already got it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to throw some fuel on it. We're going to ignite your fire a little bit bigger this morning. Because God says he's here in the house. Uh-huh. He says he's here in the house to set the captive free. Some of you here today, uh-huh, some of you here today is standing in the gap. Some of you here today is standing in the burdens for some of the people. Some of you is lost without God today, and some of you are praying for the ones that are in jail, in prison, in the hospitals, in the nursing homes, in here and in there. God is doing that. God says, I'm going to set the captives free this day. But you know what, my friends? you got to be ready to let that captive free. you got to be ready to let the Holy Spirit run in your place. Amen? Woohoo! God's good. God's good. God's good. No matter how we get around today, God is good. And see, God is on the throne, and God will do anything for us. Whew. Hearing and doing the word. Well, Pastor Steve, what's that mean? Just like I said. You can't only hear the word. You must do the word. How many times have you read the Bible and you go, okay, don't understand that. I don't know what that meant. But yet there's sometimes you read the Bible and you go, woohoo, boy, look at that. I know what that means. I'm ready to go. And then the next time you're like, a deal weed, you just sat there. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. You see, there even the babies know when God's talking, right? Even the babies know about it. I love them babies. Amen. She's saying amen, 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 amen. But you know what? <laughs> hey, them's all my babies. Amen. Them's God's babies. They're all God's babies. Amen. But I appreciate you being here today. You know what, guys? Listening, hearing, and doing the word takes faith, it takes belief, it takes that discernment, it takes what's called the Holy Spirit. Can you remember the day when you first got saved, or maybe even before you got saved, you would try to read the Bible and you just really couldn't make heads or tails out of it? I can't never think to forget what Sister Sheila did. She had to pick up the children's Bible and read it, but she learned something out of that. And I think that's so cool. Because whatever it takes to learn God's word, I think, no, I know, is okay with him. It's okay with him. Have you graduated up one step yet? Oh, praise God. I was going to say, now that was several years ago. If not, sister, come on, let's pray for you. Amen. But we got to do what we got to do to get God's word instilled into our hearts. Amen. James 1, are you there? Amen. Verse number 19. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you like I always do. Some of you are not going to like me after this, but here we go. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Mm. Is everybody ready to read 22 aloud? I think we all need it. Are you ready? But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Mm. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Well, I was just talking about mirrors, wasn't I? For he that beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. That's so true, isn't it? But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word. This man shall surely be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious 
<laughs> this is good. And bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God. And the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the word. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you again for the day. I thank you for the word that you have given me. I ask that you would give me the right way to put it out this day. I thank you for the honor and the privilege to bring it forth. I thank you for every ear in this place. If we all want to hear the word today and be a doer of the word, I ask that we could all say amen. amen. Hearing, <laughs> hearing and doing the word. I believe all of us knows how to listen, and I sure enough know that we know all how to talk. But sometimes we talk too much, and we don't listen enough. We got to be quicker, my friends, to listen, slower to speak, and slower to anger. Now, God is trying to tell us that today is because... When we don't listen to other people's situations and problems and things that they want to share with us, if we keep cutting them off and keep stopping their conversation, you're not going to be able to help them because you keep cutting them off. Now, that's what we do to God sometimes. We cut him off, and God is trying to bless you God is trying to bless us tremendously every day of our Christian walk. Is he not? And sometimes we're known to cut that off. Don't look at me like I'm the only one that ever does that now. You know it's the truth. We cut our own blessings shy someday. And then we look back and we go, well, gee, I wonder what happened. You know what happened. You know what happened. You're too worried about talking. You're too concerned about talking. You're too concerned about speaking ahead and trying to run over somebody. That's what you're talking about. Now, anger is not good in God's sight. Do we all have anger? Yes, we've all had anger before in our lives. And yes, we all seem to have a tendency to get that anger. But you know what, guys? We have to get past that anger thing. Because I'm going to tell you something. Anger is not of God. And I think that we need to pray that God removes anger from our hearts, from our lifestyle. Amen? You know, it's just not right in God's eyes. You know, trials and tribulations that we all go through, amen, they require silence and patience. Some of us don't know what silence is. Some of us sure don't know what patience is. You do. You know what it is. For some reason, sometimes we just don't use it as we should. Well, anger is also going to distract you from talking to God. Now, do you really think today that you can go to God in anger and talk with him and have a good little discussion? God's not going to listen to that. God doesn't have to listen to that. And God will not listen to that. You know, when we go to someone with a problem or a situation, if we pray about it, but you know what we do most time? We're ready. Instead of saying, whoa, I got to pray about this. I got to ask God to help me with this. I've got to see which way he wants me to go. Most of the time, that's going to work out good. But now sometimes you're going to come to a party, a person that's not going to still accept that. But you did what you needed to do. But most time, that's going to work out. You know why? Because you've got God's favor. You've prayed for his favor. You not only listen to the word, but you do what the word tells you to do. There's another verse in there, number 21, that says, So get rid of all the filth in your life. Get humble and let God control your life, for it is strong enough to save your soul. Well, that's good to know. James advises us in the Bible this morning 
It works so goes to get rid of all that's wrong in our life and humble ourselves to the salvation message. God's coming soon and very soon. And I believe that God is coming after the righteous. I believe that God is coming after the faithful. I believe that God is coming after the just. But I also believe that every single one of us is going to be standing in what's called that judgment line. And when we get up to that judgment line and when we finally make our way to God, he's going to know. He's going to know. Don't think you can come up with some kind of a story to get your way through. Don't think you can use your high pain to get you into heaven. Don't think you can use your Sunday school teaching advantage to get to heaven. It takes a lot more than that. Now, in saying all this this morning, why am I saying this, and what has this got to do with this? Because when we hear and we do the word, we're going to do it correctly. That's if you want to be a Christian. You're going to hear the word, you're going to read the word, and you're going to do what God tells you to do. But see, a lot of times we're bad about taking things on ourselves. Amen? 22. That's so good. Be ye doers and hearers. This means we are to listen and obey, then work together for the goodness of God. I want to work together for the goodness of God. I want the, the goodness of God to work in this dwelling place. I want the goodness of God to work in my spirit as well as your spirits today, as well as in this congregation, as well as inside this community here to show the goodness of God. See, God is goodness. There's no bad to him, okay? So if we share the goodness of God to the community, let's take it out of the box this morning, okay? Let's take it out of the church this morning. If we show the goodness of God to the world, a lot of people's going to accept that. You could even have and get some people saved. I know, sometimes we're too embarrassed to go talk to somebody, right? Sometimes we're too shy. Sometimes we're too busy. We don't have time for that. Sometimes it's too late. Sometimes I'm hungry. Sometimes I just don't feel like it. Woo, what if Jesus felt like that? <laughs> yeah, huh? What if Jesus felt like that next time you get yourself in a bind? I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm going on vacation. I need to lay down for a little while. Reminds me when he was laying down in that old boat. Them old guys was worried sick, wasn't he? I mean, they was worried sick. You seen how worried Jesus was. I could about imagine how that old boat was a rocking and a tossing. And I imagine the water was even hitting Jesus, and he still wasn't waking up. Because, see, he's the calm of all of our storms. He can calm any storm that we go through. Now, as I said earlier this morning, some of you in here this morning, you're not only here for yourself, but you're here for someone else. You're here because you want to basically, I guess I could say, stand in the gap for another person. Oh, maybe a family member. Oh, maybe your whole family. <laughs> God knows them desires. But God says, you expect me to help you, but you don't want to help yourself for me. <laughs> Hearers and doers of the word. We've got to do it all. Sometimes I think we expect too much out of God for what little that we do. If we, I don't know, I'm just going to say it like I need to say it, I guess. If we would... Put forth more effort to serve God. Seriously. Put forth more effort to serve God. God would see that. God would know that. God does realize that. I believe God can come into our lives so strong that we're going to look back and think, why didn't I do this a long time ago? Why haven't I committed myself more to god why haven't i pulled the old cross daily i taught the young ones this morning an assigned cross 
all of you is assigned a cross. I told them when they go to school, aren't they assigned a seat? Aren't they assigned somewhere to stand in line? Aren't they assigned a certain thing? God has given us all that cross. God says this cross is yours. But now I want you to pick it up daily. And I want you to move with that. And I want you to know what that's all about. See, God put that old cross on Jesus. He carried it all the way to his death. Now there's a point to this. You're going to have to start carrying your cross all the way to the end of the road. You're going to have to carry your cross till death. Well, Pastor Steve, that's kind of hard to do. Really, it's not. If you just ask God. But I don't try that on your own because you will think I'm fibbing to you this morning. Carrying the cross, assigning the cross, is like being a hearer and a doer of the word. Because my Bible tells me that we have to have that daily cross. My Bible tells me that God is virtually, basically, assigned us a cross to do what we need to do. Am I right? But do we do that? No, we don't. If you listen and you don't obey, you're going to fool yourself. Now, I'm covering the scriptures, maybe not in exact order, but you just follow along with me because you know where I'm at. Look at your scriptures, and you'll see what I'm talking about tomorrow. We're going to stay right there in James. What's that part? He's talking about the glass. I remember one day a long time ago, I had them little handheld mirrors like this. You buy for like a dollar at the dollar store. And, boy, I handed them out to everybody in the church. I would had everybody look at yourself, put it down. Look at yourself, put it down. Well, guess what? After a little while, you done kind of forgot what you look like. You also forgot if he was smiling or frowning. But what that means is, you see yourself in the mirror, but when you turn away, you left the vision. This is what happens when we leave the tracks of God. When we lose God and when we get off track, he loses vision of us. Now, God's always there, and God sees us, but when we venture off on la-la land, or when we venture off to places that we shouldn't go, you're losing focus on what God has for you. But sometimes when we get off track like that, we still expect God to help us. What's that called? I think that's called a little bit of selfishness. But if we keep looking, if we keep focusing, if we keep steadily looking into God's perfect law, the law that sets you free, don't you love the law that sets you free today? Amen. And if you don't want it, I guess you can just give it away. And if you don't want all that, you can give some of that to me. If you don't want them blessings, send them my way. Huh? I want them blessings. I'll take them. Good morning, guys. It's good to know that the law has set you free. It's good to know this morning that God loves you. It's good to know this morning that when we die, we can go to that place called heaven. It's good to know that when we get there, no more aches, no more pains, no more sorrows, no more understandings. Amen? All these funerals and memorials have been here lately. I'm beginning to wonder if any of us going to be here. I'm about ready to go into full-time service for funerals. Amen? But thank God that most of them I've done lately, they was a Christian. I had to ask about the one I got to do today. I didn't know the lady. She's only been here five years from somewhere. I don't know where. Yep, she was a Christian. Well, praise God. Now, I have to take that, and I have to use that after a while in that memorial, and I have to get some smiles out of them faces. If this lady's a Christian, don't be coming up here blowing snot all over and leaking all over. Amen. Be happy. Amen. Be happy where she's at. Yes, we mourn. Yes, we miss. And yes, we're going we're gonna to miss them forever. But one thing about it, when they're a Christian and we know where they're at, amen. amen, that makes all things possible. I think it's great, don't you? 
Mm. Number 26. James 1, verse number 26. This is a good one. Now listen to me. This is where some of you won't like me anymore. If any man among you, and by the way, females this morning, that means you also. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridle not of his tongue, <laughs> but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. If you claim to be a Christian, and you don't control that tongue, you're not doing nothing but fooling yourself. There are notes in chapter 3 for more on taming the tongue. If you want to go home this afternoon, instead of mouthing off to your spouse, go home and read the Bible today. On taming that tongue, controlling that speech. <laughs> okay, you guys, quit looking at each other. All you spouses, quit looking at each other. Controlling the tongue. That's a big job. How come everybody's laughing at me? You know it's true, don't you? Controlling the tongue. It is tough. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Sometimes some of the things we say, you almost want to go look in the mirror and say, did that come out of here? Yeah, you know it did. How do we control that, guys? <clears throat> what do we do? Good job. Fill our mind with godly thoughts. Focus upon the eyes of Jesus. You remember what the song told us this morning? All things. I know. Some of you looking at your spouse like, I don't know if he meant the tongue. Oh, yeah, he did. He meant all things are possible through the name of Jesus. No matter how big of a mouth your spouse has, no matter how bad of a tongue your kid has, you need to go to praying. You need to ask God to intervene on the situation. I know somebody the other day said, my little boy said a bad word. I went and washed his mouth out with soap. Five minutes later, he comes and said, Mommy, that tastes pretty good. What kind of soap was that? <laughs> I thought, the devil even works in a five-year-old. I, I suggest next time, lava. She must have used dove. I suggest it's lava time. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, Mom, what kind was that? That tastes pretty good. I first laughed. I thought that's what a five-year-old would say. And I said, you know what? We shouldn't laugh. We probably did the same thing once before in our life. Amen? That was pretty good stuff. That's how the devil works. The devil even made soap taste good to this kid. The mama's like, really? She didn't try prayer. She tried soap. Soap is clean, but prayer is cleaner. Huh? Soap is a good thing to have, believe me. Amen? But, oh, faith is even better to have. <laughs> the tongue. It starts from these little bitty people, right? The bigger we get, the bigger our tongue gets. Listen to this. The more you stay out of church, the bigger your tongue gets. Listen to this. The more selfishness you got, the bigger your tongue gets. As my wife has always said, if you're not Christ-centered, you're self-centered. And if you're self-centered, let me, let me say this, you're going to say things you shouldn't say. I remember a word a while ago called anger. The anger steps in, then the tongue the tongue grows. We seen a poor little fellow the other day. He had a real big tongue. It was so big it wouldn't even fit in his mouth. It was hanging out. Me and my wife looked at each other and said, I sure hope he grows into that tongue. Amen? Because it reminded me of the tongue that sometimes us Christians have. Our tongue is so big it hangs out like an old bulldog. Can't wait to slap somebody with it. 
can't wait to say something. But God blesses me. No, God doesn't bless you if you have a bad tongue. God doesn't bless you if you say bad things all the time that you shouldn't be saying. But I know someone this morning that can take care of that. Number 27. Let's put this last one in perspective here this morning and see what we're talking about this morning, okay? Pure religion and unbe undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the word. There's three sermons right there. But I'm not giving them all to you. I'll just touch them, okay? I want us to be a pure and lasting Christian. I want us to control our speech. I want us to control our behavior, our life, and our attitude. Has anybody ever heard that book, The Mind of Christ? To have the mind of Christ, you've got to be Christ-like. To be Christ-like, you've got to have a clean tongue, not with soap. With that spiritual soap. Well, pure religion and undefiled before God and Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the word. Let's talk about to visit the fatherless and the widows. My friends, we got to care for the widows and the orphans. And we got to refuse to let the world talk us out of that. We need to keep a watch on our widows, keep a watch on the orphans, the, the, I think the homeless, I think all that's included. That's hard to do if you're not a Christian. Has anybody ever went and visited the homeless? That's a rough job. It's a rough job. We've done it. It's a rough job. It's a tough job. It's a very, it could be a depressing job if you let it. But you've got to keep asking God for strength and faith as you do it during the day. And then when you see that dirty little face light up, when you see that little smile come up and you see them teeth, and they're smiling because of what you've done, Makes it all nice in the eyes of the Lord. And you turn around and you walk away from them after you've handed them a lunch or handed them a blanket or a jacket or a pair of socks. Simple as a pair of socks. They'll smile. This amazed me when we went to Houston and did that. A person living in a cardboard box. Here we are in this nice big red air-conditioned van. Okay. We got all these nice little lunches put together. We got all these blankets and sweaters and coats and socks and caps and gloves and all kinds of things. We just kind of asked the Lord what to give, you know, whatever, each person. Some of them would come crawling out of that cardboard box, freezing, because it was back in February. And when you would hand them something, they would smile and they would say, I'm blessed. You have a blessed day. And I'd look at my wife and say, they're blessed? Now that's saying a lot to me. I'm blessed living in a cardboard box? I'm blessed living in the cold rain? Now to me, I think that's pretty cool. I think that was pretty awesome. And yet us, yet all of us blessed Christians this morning, sometimes we gripe and we moan. And we complain because it's 71 degrees in here instead of 70. You follow my point? Where is our respect, guys? What has this got to do with what I'm preaching this morning? If you hear the word and do the word, you're going to have respect. And you're going to understand these things. Three key aspects to pure religion. Controlled speech, service, and separation from the world. What's that mean? Separation from the world. Does that mean we all need to run off into the woods and build a church and get away from everybody? 
Or does that mean that we need to quit our jobs and stay at home and call Mr. Obama and tell him to send us a check every month? Or does that mean that we're supposed to go hide? What does that mean, separation from the world? It means we have to live in the world, but we don't have to partake of the world. That's exactly right. We do have to live in this world, but we do not have to partake of this world. There's some of you, there are some of you in here today that does not even own a TV. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's great. In fact, I'm thinking about being one of them people. It's awful disgusting every time you turn the TV on, the things you see. Hmm? It does. It tortures your soul. And then you see, like, this guy that got beheaded over the other day. It's nothing to them people. That meant nothing. You could tell. That meant nothing. That didn't mean a thing. That's how the world is coming today. It's hard to keep up with the news because you hate to see all that but sometimes it feels like you need to kind of know what's going on but then again the more you think about it and the more you pray about it i believe god's going to let us know what's going on yeah. i believe god is going to keep everything under control i think god is going to let us know when we're going to have to move or go a different place or do something different or say something different that is if we're a hearer and a doer of the word Now, I want us all to not only hear the word, I want us to do what God tells us to do. Some of us, all of us may already do that. I don't know. If you do, praise God. That's great. But if not, I want to have an altar call this morning. And I want to ask that we can get ourselves where we need to be. You know, the enemy's tough. I mean, the devil is on the rampage. He tries daily to destroy this church. Some of you don't know. He tries, but he can't. Why can't he? We are the doers of the word. Now, I tell you, we have some leadership meetings around here. Boy, do we have some leadership meetings around here. Boy, sometimes do we have some leadership meetings. And I'm telling you, I told them the other day, I'm getting tired of having so many of them. Now, guys, we got to get our acts together. If we as leaders can't keep this place under control with the glory of God, this place will fall. So I want you to realize something this morning. Some of you that just come here don't realize what all goes on in the church. But the devil is steadily trying to rip churches apart. Not just this one. Every church. That is, if they're a really a true God-fearing church, he's going to try to rip them apart, just like he does marriages. How about that? God loves to tear a Christian, I mean, uh, the devil loves to tear a Christian relationship up. And guess what? we got to be very strong in that situation. You know what else the devil likes to do? Take your kids away from you. Sister Sarah grabbed on to Sister Crystal. But it's true. It's so true. The devil is on the rampage, and he works so hard to try to destroy, especially when you say you're a Christian. In fact, I think we're going to leave out with that song after a while about the Christian. Are you really a Christian? Are we really Christians? Think about it in sincerity, guys. All of you just think real hard here this morning. Are you really a Christian?